We are so back, baby, with a brand new Blender tutorial. Heating things up by creating a fiery tornado. You can use this to create regular tornadoes too, but flaming ones are definitely more fun. I covered this topic about four years ago, and since then we have new stimulation physics for smoke inside of Blender, plus some new rendering techniques for some faster, high quality results and much faster simulation and render times. You can download the finished tornado Blender file over on the Patreon page. It's just a few bucks and you gain access to all the finished projects made here on the channel. Hope you're excited, and when it comes to making professional visual effects like this, it helps to have some pro hardware to work with. Like the pro art line of PC hardware from ASUS, this video sponsor. Starting with the ProArt Z790 motherboard, with full support for the latest Intel 13th and 14th gen processors, all the ports and accessories you could want, 10 gigabyte ethernet and Wi-Fi 6E support, and powering this with the Intel 13900KS processor that goes all the way up to 6 gigahertz, paired with 48 gigabytes of fast DDR5 8000 megahertz RAM, which yes, this motherboard actually handled perfectly. And for graphics, the ProArt NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti Overclocked Edition. A big fan of the build quality and look of this GPU with the sleek gray and gold. For cooling on the PC, we have the ProArt All-in-One 420mm Liquid Cooler. And it does a fantastic job of keeping the hot 13900KS under control as it never thermal throttled in my testing. And lastly, we have Asus's ProArt Case. Starting with massive cooling, plenty of space, onboard settings for fan control, fast charging, plenty of USB ports, and easily removed movable air filters across the board. All these parts together make for an incredible PC for us artists. So let's do some creating. Check out all these parts along with this ProArt professionally calibrated IPS HDR display. You'll find all the links down there below the like button and thanks to ASUS for sponsoring this video tutorial. So for starters in Blender 2.4, we'll go ahead and delete the default. Eh, we'll use the default cube this time and just hit S on 14 to scale it 14 times. You can scale it up along the Z axis a little bit to make it slightly rectangular and then hit Z to switch into wireframe mode so we can see through it. Then go Shift A and add in a UV sphere. Scale it up a little bit, then tab into edit mode and box select the top half of the vertices and hit X to delete them. Now you can tab back into object mode and just scale this along the Shift Z axis. So it's only scaling along the X and Y, just big enough to fit inside of the cube, and then hit G and then Z to move it along the Z axis to the top of the cube. This will be our particle system for our tornado cloud. So give yourself a little bit of room and switch to the particle settings here. Click the plus button to add a new particle system. Add an extra zero to the number to make it 10,000 particles. Give it a lifetime of about 150. And a little bit of lifetime randomness is good as well. Scroll down to the physics and give it some Bronian motion. This is for some erratic movement of the particles. Something around five or six here is good. The only other setting then is under velocity. By default, the normal emission is sent to one. Just change this to zero. If you hit play in your timeline, you can see we have a bunch of particles raining down. Perfect to control now with some force fields. So start by going shift A and adding in a force field vortex. Move it down to the bottom of your cube and see what that does. Starting to get a little bit of a funnel going. Go ahead and give it a slight negative value on the inflow to pull it inwards a bit. You give the strength a little bit more value of a 1.4 or 1.5 and then go ahead and add in a second force field. This will be a force force field. For this one, we want a strong negative value, so it's a pulling motion instead of a pushing motion. So give it a negative 12 on the strength, and you can see that's having some control over the particles. Just make sure it's centered inside of your cube. And last but not least, we need a magnetic force to really pull these particles into our funnel shape. So I'll go shift A and add in the magnetic force field. Change the shape from point to plane, so it's only working on a flat axis. Give it a negative value again to pull those particles in of negative 2, and then a positive 2 on the flow. This gives us a perfect funnel shape for our particles. And if you want to animate this tornado, you can move the force field around as you can see here, or the vortex, and control the position of that tornado. Cool! Now let's get cooking. Grab that cube that we decided to keep and go to your physics tab. Click plus on the fluid and then change the type to domain. We want to leave it as gas. We can increase our divisions to 64 for now, but we'll go a little bit higher later. And then we're just going to choose two settings, one being adaptive domain and the other being dissolve. You can set this to a value of 25 or 30. This is frames from 100% to nothing, so you want to last about a second or so in your timeline. I'm going to start with 24, but I might go up to 30 later. Then grab your particle sphere at the top and add in the fluid physics to this as well. This time changing the type to flow. You're going to change the flow type to fire and smoke. Change the flow behavior to inflow, so it's adding smoke to the scene. And then scroll down to the flow source and change it from mesh to particle system. But make sure you choose the particle system in the bottom here. Even though it shows it kind of grayed out, it's not really selected until you click on it and choose particle system. And with that, you can see we get a little bit of fire added to our particles here. And if we played our simulation back, you can see we now have a fiery tornado being simulated inside of Blender. It's already pretty freaking awesome. I'm going to crank the resolution divisions to 90. This is still relatively low, but with the materials we'll be adding in a second, 
significant, it will be perfectly adequate. If you have slower hardware, you might want to leave this at a lower number and just roll with it. And now it's time for the rendering and some of those material tricks to give us more detail inside of the smoke simulation. Starting by going to your render settings and changing the render engine from EV to Cycles. Change your device to GPU Compute so you're rendering with your faster hardware. Then scroll down to Light Pass and under Volume, give it 1. So you get some light bounces inside of our volume metrics. The other setting here is under Volumes. You can change the step rate. I'm going to leave it at 1, but if you have slow hardware, you might want to crank this up to a 2 or 3 for faster render times, albeit at the cost of some quality. So now we're going to split our window. We're going to choose the light source in the scene, and under our light settings, we're going to change it from a point light to a sunlight. Give it a strength of 2 or something and an angle of 0.2 and then a nice warm color. You can double tap R to rotate it and pivot it so it's kind of pointing towards your view. And then if you switch to rendered view, you see nothing because we haven't done any of the materials yet, silly. Okay, so now on the left, you can switch this window to your shader editor and let's make some materials. Start by selecting the principled BSDF and hitting X to delete it, then going Shift A and adding in a volume scattered node. This node is so cool, we're gonna duplicate it so we have two of them. With the bottom one, change the anastrophe level to be around a 0.9, and with the top one, give it an anastrophe level of about 0.3. Then go Shift A and add in an add shader, and then connect both volume scatter nodes to this. This will be connected to the volume slot on our material output. And you still don't see anything, because we need to tell Blender to use the density of that smoke simulation. So go Shift A and search for the attribute node. Drop it in, and then change the name to density. Then add in a converter math node, change it from math to to multiply, connect the attribute color output to the top value, and then this value will control the intensity of our density, connecting it to the density of both our volume scatter nodes. Ta-da! Now we have some volumetric rendering. And if you crank the value up on our multiply node, you can increase the density. We're going to be playing around with this a lot, but you can see the resolution is quite low as we've only simulated this at 90 divisions, with no extra detail added. So it's time for some node material fun. Starting by going Shift A and finding the texture coordinate node. Drop that in, then go Shift A and add in a separate X, Y, and Z node. Connect the object output to the vector here. Now we can have control over all three coordinates on the textures. Go ahead and add in a combined X, Y, Z node as well. Now if we drop in a math node, connect the z-axis to the top value, and connect the output to the z-axis as well, you can switch this to multiply and then control the value of just the z-axis on your texture coordinates. Cool! This little node setup is going to allow us to do some cool deformations to the volumetrics. You'll just have to add in a mapping node now, and connect the combine X, Y, and Z to the rotation on the mapping node. Now if you add in a texture, noise texture, give it a small scale of something like a 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, Give it some more detail around a value of 8, some roughness around 0.9 is good, and a tiny bit of distortion. Connect the vector to our noise texture, then go Shift A and add in a color, Mix Color. Drop it in after your attribute node and change it from Mix to Linear Light. Now it's important to remember to connect the object output on your texture coordinate to the vector on your mapping node. This completes a nice little circle here of nodes, and if you have this set up here, you're ready to go and connect that noise texture to the bottom socket on that linear light node. You can see this gives us some really cool, highly detailed deformations. Now this is cool and all, but we're kind of losing our tornado shape, and so to get it back, we're gonna duplicate our linear light node here, change it from linear light to overlay, and then grab the color output on our attribute density node and connect this to the bottom socket. If you give this a value of one, you can see it cuts back that volume to just the shape of our tornado. You can play around with this setting and give it like a 0.99 value just to incorporate a little extra mist around the tornado. It looks kind of cool. Then play around with your multiply node connected to your separate X, Y, and Z to control the scale of these deformations that are kind of twisting down our tornado now. You can see we already have way more detail to this tornado without having to do any more complicated simulations. And we can easily take this detail even further. Just duplicate your noise texture, change the scale to something higher this time around a 12 or 13 value is good, and increase this detail even higher to around to 12 as well. Then duplicate that linear light node and connect these two textures with it. You want to play around with the factor here and probably take it down below a 0.5%. You can also give this new noise texture a little bit more distortion, but that is looking pretty cool. And if you go Shift A and drop in a converter color ramp node here, just to kind of tweak that above texture, you can have even more control over the shape of your tornado here and sort of the detail of that noise. So to really light up your tornado now, you're gonna duplicate the add shader at the end of your node tree here, dropping it right in place, and then going Shift A and adding in an emission shader. Connect this to the bottom socket, and you can see we're getting nothing but a white emission cube. That's because we need to duplicate our attribute node and this time change it from density to flame. Connecting the color to the color on the emission node, you can see that gives us some white hot fire in our tornado. Dropping in a converter color ramp though and pulling the black value way in, and then control clicking to add two more colors in here, one of them being a flame and hot red color, 
and the next one being a flaming hot yellow color. Playing around with these handles, we can get a real nice looking flame look. And to control the intensity of this flame, just like with the smoke, we'll duplicate our math multiply node, connect our flame attribute to the top value, and then that multiply to the strength on our emission shader. And you can see here, we now have control over the strength of the fire. And now just like the smoke, the quality of this fire, if you zoom in, is pretty low, let's be honest. So we can go ahead and duplicate one of our noise textures and one of our linear light textures again, dropping it in after the attribute node just like before, connecting the noise texture to the bottom socket and giving it a different scale value. You can see this adds a bunch of extra detail into those little bits of fire inside of the tornado, making it look way better even though it's a low resolution simulation. And congratulations, you made it to the end of this tutorial. You can now control the density of the volume with the color ramp here, determining how much of those textures you want mixed in, and of course the only overall density with this multiply node. I found a value around 30 to 40 for the smoke worked well, and then for the intensity of the fire, you can go all the way up to 100 or whatever looks good to you. But adjusting the color ramp and the linear light mix will kind of cut away at the smoke and reveal more of the fire underneath. So play around with this until you get a little bit of that flame showing through, which looks really cool. As a bonus tip, you can add a second sphere and another particle system at the bottom of your tornado and have these be sort of dust particles that are being picked up and swirled. And with dust particles added, you can actually render these as assets. So for example, if I grabbed a few of my branch assets here from my Nature Essentials asset pack, and then under these particle settings, just rendered them instead of a halo as an object, and that object would be one of those branch assets. You get some debris being kicked up and also being able to be rendered in the scene with that same particle system. System. And if you'd like the finished file, it's of course available on the Patreon. But that wraps up this tutorial, guys. You already know I'm going to want to see your finished results. So if you're on Instagram or Twitter, tag me when you create a cool render because I love seeing what you create. Thanks again to Asus for making this video possible. The ProArt build was fantastic to use on this project, accelerating my workflows while being quiet and stable. Check out the ProArt hardware with the links in the description. Hit that like button if you want to see more, and I'll see you real soon in a new upcoming video. Bye-bye!